Um, I think I will just start with giving a few words about what is Prefer, IMI Prefer. So IMI Prefer is a public-private partnership between profit and non-profit entities or institutions where we have the industry, uh, like large pharmaceutical companies, but also smaller companies that collaborate with academic institutions, um, health technology uh, agency, uh, agencies, patient organizations, in order to find out methodologies about how to measure and how to implement uh, methodologies uh, on patient preferences and how these patient preferences can be measured, but also implemented in decision making. And the ultimate aim of PREFER is to guide industry, regulatory authorities, HDA bodies, reimbursement agencies with their decisions on um, uh, in different um, uh, institutions that they have and to guide them on how to measure patient preferences, how they can be assessed and how they can be used to inform medical product decision making. Uh, with the aim also for them to further develop um, evidence-based recommendations based on what the insights of Prefer reveal. Prefer is a project that has started in 2016 um, with an, uh, a work package that uh, focused on finding out more about patient preference methodologies. Uh, we uh, did a lot of interviews, a lot of focus groups, discussions and reveals therefore lots of insights about stakeholders and what are their needs. We will hear much about this later uh, by Rosanne. After that work, we selected certain patient preference methodologies that were further on used into concrete case studies. Prefer is conducting and has conducted several case studies in different disease areas. And these the case studies are still going on and certain have been, have been finalized already and are at the, at the point of um, analysis. At the same time, we have been involved in an EMA UNITA qualification procedure, um, which is also a procedure that is going on in order to um, involve also uh, the, um, uh, to get also the approval uh, for this EMA, for this patient preference study at the EMA UNITA um, level. And um, as we are in the COVID time, indeed, we had a very difficult time also for, uh, for PREFER. However, we managed to continue all our case studies, most of the case studies, and uh, we aim to draft our recommendations by the end of uh, March 2022. But what are these patient preferences in the end? So there are different concepts that circulate, uh, which are all related to the term patient preferences. Um, think about patient reported outcomes. People sometimes confuse patient preferences with patient reported outcomes, but patient reported outcomes are more data that are collected on the health status of a particular patient directly from these patients, so without any comparison with the alternatives. Whereas patient preferences, as we use in PREFER, are more uh, referred to qualitative and quantitative assessments of the relative desir desirability and acceptability to patients of specific alternatives or choices among the outcomes or other attributes that differ among uh, alternative health interventions. And here the term attribute is a particular uh, important one. So it's really about what is the relative desirability and acceptability of patients of different attributes that are related to a particular health intervention. And attributes are characteristics, features related to these interventions or disease states. These can be benefits related to that, for instance, the relief of pain, or risks related to a particular health intervention, for instance, the loss of hair, risk of having a loss of hair, or uncertainties related to it. For instance, what are the long-term uh, health safety risks that are related to, to a particular treatment. Or even other um, aspects which we uh, are um, uh, in need of, for instance, certain types of information that is or is not available. And all these aspects are important for different stakeholders to take decisions across the um, drug life cycle. 
Here you see these different stakeholders that can make use of patient preferences in their decision-making context. Um, for instance, at the level of discovery, at the level of preclinical development, also during clinical development, marketing authorization, uh, think of decisions at European Medicines Agency or at the FDA. Health technology uh, agencies or reimbursement agencies. Here you see the KCE, which is the partner in our project, uh, or at the post-marketing post authorization level. And what type of uh, decisions are these then? Well, it can be about decisions related to, to defining the relative clinical trial endpoint selections or about the um, patient reported outcome measures development itself. It can also be decisions which are related to benefit risk assessments or labeling or early access. And on a general level, um, patient preferences might inform decision making, especially those decisions that are patient preference sensitive. So we call them patient preference sensitive situations or patient preference sensitive decisions. And what are then patient preference sensitive decisions or situations? These are situations where there's really a need for the patient's view. For instance, about the most important attributes, benefits, risks, modes of administrations of a particular disease, of a particular medicinal product. That might be one situation. Another situation can be when multiple treatment options exist and no option is clearly superior uh, for all the patients that we have in our mind. And then it might also be a preference sensitive situation. So a situation where pre patient preferences might really have value, where there is really an uncertainty or where, the other op where there is indeed evidence that support one option over the other and whether that uh, is uncertain or var variable and where there is really a need to understand what is the patient's tolerance for that uncertainty. And lastly, there is also a situation where there might be a need to investigate further the heterogeneity among different uh, patients' views in the population. And so we need to take care of about these situations and um, especially there, uh, the generation of information about patient preferences is valuable. And how do we do this? We do this um, based on or using or setting up patient preference studies. So patient preference studies are studies that are characteristically or typically set up in different steps. There is a design step of a patient preference study. There is the conduct step, so the, the point where we conduct the study, execute the study. And then we have the, the point where we communicate about the results uh, of this patient preference study. And indeed, all, of, all these aspects need to be organized adequately. And that's also something which is um, which need to be taken into account. So patient preference studies typically consist of a qualitative phase and a quantitative phase. And we think of uh, when we talk about the qualitative phase, um, patient preference studies make use of qualitative methods, literature reviews, focus groups, interviews, depending on the setup, depending on the type of population, a group of population that we need to target. And within at the qualitative level, we want to investigate what do patients find important treatment attributes, and not only what, but also why. And the moment we have that, this may inform the more quantitative phase of the study, which might be a survey, discrete choice experiment, or a swing weighting uh, type of exercise, where we want to investigate okay, how much do patients now value these attributes and what are the trade-offs that these patients are willing to make between these attributes? And how do preferences differ according to the different characteristics that all these patients have in our sample? What is the patient heterogeneity? So for this quantitative part, the aim is really to quantify, to give patient preference weights, relative importance of the attributes determination, what is the maximal acceptable risk or the minimum acceptable benefit that patients need in order to accept a certain risk, for instance? And for that, we also target a larger group of patients compared to the qualitative part in order to reach significant results. So this is actually, in a nutshell, what are patient preference studies, how you can uh, set them up, is something which we in prefer work further out. 
and which we you can also hear in subsequent um, webinars um, in the future.